Thanks. A little bit of branding for you there to start off with. Um, I'm just going to mainly talk about the particular project uh, that was on its nice that, and then uh, talk a little bit about some other stuff at the end. Um, but this was a uh, street project that I started really out of, sort of born out of frustration. Um, I, I shoot uh, commercial stuff and I shoot uh, actors' headshots and stuff in the music industry. Um, but as a, as a portraitist, sometimes it, I don't know, I found I was getting frustrated by um, sort of waiting for a commission to come along. And so I was living in Stoke Newington at the time and looking out my window and deciding, trying to sort of think of portrait projects or places I could go to, um, to, to, to sort of get inspired and, and, and photograph people. And uh, it just, you know, sort of dawned on me that there really is enough inspiration just going past my window every day. Like, there's enough interesting looking people. Um, I kind of feel that it's not necessarily like it, there's nothing particularly like original about the idea for this. Um, you know, a lot of people do street photography, they are inspired by their environment. Um, but this is, yeah, this is, this is my interpretation of it. Um, I kind of also weirdly feel like as a photographer that I have a slight responsibility to document what's going on around me as well as sort of just make a living from it um, and create images from scratch. I kind of feel like uh, that I should document people that, uh, that share my, my, my habitat, basically. Um, so I, I originally decided to keep it pretty local. I thought, said to myself, I'll just do 100 yards either side of my front door. Um, and that just kind of gave me a little, a little framework, you know, like something that I knew that would be interesting when people who were potentially looking at it on the internet, which is, there's a million different things to look at every minute, just that's like a little handle, 100 yards, that's the entire distance that I went. Um, it changed a little bit, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but these are all basically between, I mean, I guess a lot of you are, are fairly local, so um, oh, you can see that's the question mark bar now. It's called like the, I don't know, the ham, uh, something to do with bears. It's a hamburger bar. But it's on Stoke Newington High Street between sort of uh, Church Street and kind of where Dawson begins, basically. Um, so what I ended up doing, some of these faces you might actually know, I don't know if you live in this area, like this, this particular girl, she's kind of lived there for at least as long as I have, seven or eight years, and you know, she'll ask for change and, and that kind of thing, and um, I was keen to kind of document these people and try and show, like, I think it's hard to not be exploitative in a way when you're doing street photography. I think there's inevitably an element of, of exploitation, I feel like, where you, I'm shooting and I'm taking stuff. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm going to be changing the context of it entirely, like her uh, experience of day-to-day -day life is very different and than, than, than mine, and now it's like I'm in a nice place in East London, and I'm sort of talking about it to lots of other photographers, and uh, I don't know. I'm interested in how that contrast works, and the line of, you know, you, you're, you're sort of taking a photograph, but yeah, where does exploitation and representation kind of end and begin? Um, this is Lyndon. Again, if you live in Stoke Newington, you might recognize Lyndon. Um, um, so a little bit about uh, sort of technical process, like I, when I go out to shoot this stuff, I say to myself, like, it's, it's work, it's a job, I obviously don't get paid to do these kind of projects, but I, I put it in the diary as a work day, um, and 
and I, for this series, I work with an assistant, so he'll, he or she will have a small little flash, a uh, little kind of Ellingcrom little pack with a softbox. Um, and I feel that serves two purposes, as well as being able to have a little bit of extra light. When you're stopping to ask people to photograph them, it kind of legitimizes you a little bit because you look like a photographer. Um, and I feel that's kind of really important. Like I'm not, I, I always stop and I ask people if I can take their picture. Um, a lot of street photographers don't and that's, that's cool, but I personally, enjoy a little bit of interaction um, and I like to think about what I'm interested in what, what their reaction to me um, I think say so like for example this guy you know I'd say oh hi I'm shooting a I'm taking pictures on this street um, can I take your portrait he's just like sure like, and you take a couple of frames and it's over in a second. Um, other people want to know much more about it. Um, you know, what's it for? Where are the pictures going to go? And generally, like, my answer will vary depending on my mood. Um, sometimes I've just said, you know, someone says, what's, what's it for? And I've just said, art. Um, <laughs> And, 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 and that quite often works because you just get a shrug of the shoulders and oh, all right, well, as long as it's art, then it must be all right. Um, yeah, you know, and sort of the question of where the picture is going to end up is quite a weird one because it's like, well, uh, some project I'm sort of thinking of putting together at some point, I don't know, is it might end up in a book or in a. Um, so, you know, you, you sort of, you, you hope that the people say yes. Um, I'm sort of plagued by the memory of the people that say no, just some incredible subjects who, um, you know, who I've asked and they've, they've sort of declined and it's really frustrating because there's just some great subjects that, yeah, that don't, don't want their photograph taken. Um, and I've sort of tried to do it sneakily. Well, maybe I've done it sneakily a couple of times, actually. But yeah. Um, so, uh, so the project extended slightly. I just went up to Dalston, um, started taking portraits in Dalston, uh, and then uh, down on London Bridge as well. So I sort of had an idea of doing a project on, on just people on London's bridges. Um, and then it kind of dawned on me that this is all the sort of same road. It's the same bit of road, basically, that goes up from uh, London Bridge, you know, basically up to Cambridge. Um, it's kind of accidental in a way, but uh, I think a, a length of geography is, is, is you know, I'm interested in sort of psychogeography, and it's a Roman road, so, uh, you know, just this idea that there's a same people have been trampling along this stretch of road for 2,000 years and, you know, I like photographers' uh, power to be able to hopefully be around for maybe 100 or 200 years these photographs will exist for, something like that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm generally shooting, these were pretty much taken on either like a, a Canon 5D Mark II or maybe a Sony A7R. Um, it's just shooting two or three frames at a time pretty quickly. Uh, shots like this, I mean, he's probably just blinking. Like, it wasn't, I didn't say close your eyes or anything like that, but out of the few frames that I shot, you know, it works because it has a sort of meditative kind of element to it. Um, you know, just, just great characters everywhere you look, really, in London. Like, you, you really don't have to wait that long when someone's sort of... If you ask someone and they decline, it can be frustrating, but you never have to wait very long for, for somebody else to come along again, like a guy, it's like, can I take your photograph? Uh, he's eating a packet of crisps, like he didn't stop. He, yeah, fine, like. 
you know, took a few frames, thanks, thanks mate, yeah, no worries, and he's off, like, so, um, you know, and, uh, like, um, the, there's, the, the thing about shooting street is, there's no, there's no way of it not kind of feeling weird and subversive to do it, like, I think as a photographer, you just have to accept, like, okay, this is what I'm going to go and do, this is my job today, um, and you're really sort of putting yourself out there, and you do definitely feel quite like you're, you're, you're breaking some kind of code of social interaction by asking people, but it's actually part of the fun, and if you just, you know, you start doing it, like, um, it's, sort of, it's sort of weirdly addictive, I suppose, um, and you just, yeah, it's possible to make great portraits, basically. Um, so I just talk about a couple of other sort of things that I do. Um, at the moment, there's the Portrait of Britain exhibition going on that's by the sort of uh, British Journal of Photography uh, associated with the JC Decau advertising screens. Um, so I was fortunate enough to have three images chosen, one of which they used on the cover of this month's edition. Uh, second one of which is uh, this one of Frank Carter from Gallows, which was originally a commission for a DIY magazine. Um, and, uh, and this one, which uh, was actually a portrait of the, the girl who was assisting me on that day. And it's interesting, you can spend sort of four or five hours out shooting portraits of people, and then actually the one that works was the one where you're testing the lights with your assistant, so. <laughs> but, you know, if it works, then it works. Um, and just the recent cover shoot uh, in my studio up in Seven Sisters, and uh, a couple of other magazine covers over the past couple of years. Uh, and then I just thought I'd show some other portraits that I've taken, uh, working in sort of music uh, stuff, either editorial or, or commissions for, for magazines. Uh, and then actually another side of my, my work is doing actors headshots, um, which is, is great because there's loads of actors in London and they all need headshots all the time. Um, <laughs> So it keeps the walls from the door, but I, I would get bored if I, I don't know, I, I, I like to, you know, if I have someone interesting come in, so like this guy just wanted an actor's headshot, but he, you know, just had such a great look, these thick glasses, um, and, you know, he was like, do you mind if I have a cigarette? No, 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 it's fine. Uh, let's take a photograph, and so this one has been selected for the Taylor Wessing this year, so if you go to... National Portrait Gallery, you might see that. But yeah, just actors' headshots are actually an opportunity to just have interesting people stand in front of your lens um, and create something nice. So even sometimes relatively sort of tawdry areas of photography that are perceived as being kind of um, maybe not so interesting can actually uh, turn into to, to sort of opportunities to make interesting work. Um, so that's me. <laughs>